What's going on guys, got another video for you and today it's going to be on my 12428 again, specifically on this JX Servo right here. But before I get into this video, I just want to say that if you guys are making your own 12428 or upgrading your own 12428, then you guys are probably going to want to check the description below because I am going to pretty much link and list everything that I've upgraded on this vehicle, including all the little individual parts. So check the description below if you want to find out anything about this car. I will also be linking all the videos that I've made to this car as well, including this custom front shock tower build, um, all the steering videos that I've done, the speed runs, pretty much everything. So if you guys want to know anything about this car, go ahead and check the description below. You guys just check it out anyways, because there's going to be a lot of good information down there. And <clears throat> as you can see, I've gone through a lot of servos, and I think I finally found the one that's going to be perfect for this car. So one thing you're going to want to know when you start upgrading the servo is that the original 12428 servo comes with a 5-pin proprietary connector that fits directly into the ESC of the 12428. And as you can see, the original ESC comes with the uh, receiver integrated and it has a slot for the five pin connector. <clears throat> now this is not a standardized five pin connector. This, like I said, it's proprietary. So as you can see, the other three servos are gonna have a standardized three pin connector. And what that means is these three servos are not going to fit the original electronics of the 12428 and once you upgrade the electronics of the 12428, then the original servo will not fit those upgraded electronics. So essentially what that means is once you start swapping out any of the electronics, you're pretty much gonna have to swap out absolutely everything. I mean, theoretically, if you get a brushed ESC, you could possibly use the original brushed motor, but most of you guys watching this are trying to upgrade. So essentially most of you are probably going to go brushless so that means you're going to have to swap out for a brushless esc and a brushless motor and then after that you're going to have to swap out the servo to a three pin and to connect the servo to the esc you're going to need to pick up a receiver and transmitter to connect everything together so let's go over the servos that i've gone through so far obviously i start out with the original five pin servo and once i started upgrading the electronics on the 12428 obviously i needed a servo that would fit that original 12428 servo bracket but that also had a standardized three pin connector and what you're going to find a lot is these bigger guys, these standard size servos for 10 scales, and that's going to be the most common servo you're going to come across. But it's actually kind of hard to find a servo that fits the original 12428 12 bracket in the three pin connector. And the first thing I came across was this guy. And for a while, this is the only thing I could find. I actually had to try to find a servo with the exact same dimensions that you know, had a three pin connector. And uh, after a while of Googling, that's what I came across and it worked. So that's what I stuck with. But the thing is this has just about the same power as the original servo and which is fine at first, it works great, but then it just doesn't last very long, the gear strip. And uh, yeah, it just seems to lose power after a while of use. And then the next thing I did was I ended up cramming a full-size servo into the 12428. I actually made a video on that. Once again, that'll be uh, linked in the description below, but I did cram a full-size servo into this, and that greatly improved the power because these are about two and a half kilogram servos. This is a 15 kilogram servo. Actually, no, it's a nine kilogram servo, and uh, obviously that's a huge power gain, but then I switched out the steering in my 12428 and I actually completely changed the steering system. Took out the original steering rack and put in a bell crank steering system, which once again, made a video on that. Check the description below. But, uh, and don't worry about that guys, when it comes to this servo, um, this servo will still fit your original 12428. Don't worry about the changed steering system in my car. But uh, yeah, after I changed out that to that bell crank steering, I could no longer fit this giant servo. So I had to go back to the original servo size. So I did a little bit more research and I ended up finding this one. And the part number is on the top, it's gonna say 
2506 MG, but if you look up JX PDI 2506 MG, that is the actual full part number of that servo. And once I found this, I looked at the stats and uh, it's actually just about a six kilogram servo, I believe. So you're actually getting close to the power of this full size servo but in the smaller package that's gonna fit the actual 12428 servo bracket without any modification because it is the exact same dimension as these. I've actually fit it into the bracket and it fits perfectly. And I've tested out the power and it's got plenty of power, way more power than either of these. So it's probably the best option out there so far. I've actually found another servo online and it's actually a Savox servo. And that is a $50 servo, and it doesn't even have as good a specifications as this servo right here. <clears throat> and this one is uh, $15, I believe I paid for it on AliExpress. Once again, I'll link that in the description below. All right, so before we get that JX servo put into the car, um, I'm going to show off what kind of power the JX servo puts out. And as opposed to the stock servo or the tactic servo but since i can't really get that stock servo powered up because of the five pin connector um i'm going to use this original upgraded servo that i bought instead of the original servo because it has similar specifications and i think i forgot to mention the part number before but this is the emax es 9258 so I'm going to be using that Emax servo instead of the stock servo, but it's going to essentially be about the same. And just so you guys know, um, this screw is set out about two centimeters away from the fulcrum. So that's twice as far as you would get the accurate reading for the kilogram centimeters. So if you double what you see here, then that's essentially what you're going to get as the kilogram centimeter reading. But... Um, obviously it's not the most super accurate jig in the world, so, you know, but you're going to get a basic reading, so let's get to testing. All right, so let's start off with the Emax servo in place of the stock servo because they have similar specifications. Let's go ahead and get that tested out. I'll have three pulls on each and kind of guesstimate the, uh, average. So first one is 0.95. Second pull is 0.95. And third pull, 0.95. Okay, so do not need to take an average because that is 0.95 kilograms on all three pulls, surprisingly. So, yeah, just about one kilogram. So since we're two, centimeter, two centimeters away from the fulcrum, the kilogram rating of this would essentially be if this jig were accurate which it's probably not um then the kilogram rating would be just about two kilogram centimeters so it'd be a two kilogram servo all right now let's see how that jx servo stacks up in comparison 2.7 2.6 2.55 five. Uh, we'll go 2.47. So yeah, obviously uh, we got 2.7, 2.5, and 2.47. We're going to guesstimate uh, average there. We'll call it 2.5, 2.55, and 2.7. So about 2.6 we'll call it. And if we double that, we're going to get 5.2 as opposed to the Emacs, which should be close to the stock one, which was two kilograms, this is 5.2 kilograms, so we're getting over double the power. All right, now let's see where the full-size tactic servo stacks up compared to these other two smaller servos. Four point five, say four point two, four point one. 
So as you can see, it was kind of weakening with every pull. That might have to do with, like, you know, the batteries getting juiced with all these pulls. But, uh, yeah, so we got 4.5, 4.2, and 4.1. So we'll average that about 5 point, or 4.2. So double that, and we get 8.4. So that means that the Emax was 2 kilogram. The JX was 5.2 kilogram. And this Tactic full-size servo was 8.4 kilogram in our little testing with this jig. So, yeah, that sounds just about right. So, that JX servo is that perfect middle ground where you still get that small compact size, but you're getting a good amount of power. You're not quite getting a full-size servo power, but you're, you're getting a good amount of power for its size. Alright, so I figured I'd test the servo speed as well, and as you can see, the JX servo is running backwards, which is fine. Um, pretty much all receivers are going to have a servo reverse feature, so all you have to do is set that on your actual transmitter, and that'll change the direction in which the servo will turn. But um, yeah, to test the speed, I'm going to take it all the way from one side to the other side as fast as possible, and we'll see which one finishes first which is obviously the Emacs servo. These other two servos, servos are running just about the same speed, but obviously the Emacs servo is much faster. But then again, a lot of people like fast servos for some reason. I really don't see a difference between a fast servo and a slower servo. Uh, what you get with a faster servo is you get less power. And um, if it's underpowered, then it's going to take longer to get that speed over anyways when you're actually pushing all that steering and all everything when it's actually installed in the vehicle. So it, I feel like it kind of evens out. And what you're doing with a faster servo is I feel like you're just stressing out the motor because it's just geared too high to get it to go that speed. And when you're actually pushing the steering of an RC car, then that I feel like that's why this faster steering servo is constantly breaking and I've had to replace it three or four times. And I'll see how this one goes, which I haven't installed yet, but I have a feeling that that one's gonna last pretty much forever. But yeah, once again, Yeah, Emacs servo is definitely beating the other two servos, but I prefer having more power and reliability over speed any day, which this thing's probably, once it's actually in the car and pushing the steering of the vehicle, it's probably going to be the same speed as the JX servo. Alright, so now to get the old JX servo out, my two screws are right here and right here, but if you have it in the stock configuration, the uh, your screw should be right here and right here, I believe. And I've got to take off that little nut holding this on. You're not going to have to do that because for me, that's stuff that I've added afterwards. You got the servo out. You got to take whatever servo horn you got on and take that off. install that servo horn onto your new servo you got to make sure it's centered and what you can do to make sure it's centered is you can connect it directly to your ESC and then turn it on or to, to your receiver turn it on and then it'll automatically center either that or I have this which is a good thing to have super cheap on AliExpress I'll link it down below and bam it's centered and Try to put on your horn as centered as possible. Obviously, they most of them never really quite center perfectly, but but try to get it as close as possible. After you have your servo horn centered and installed, then you just got to take this bracket off of the original servo and put it onto your new servo.
And always remember to finish off those screws by hand so you don't strip them out with that drill. And after you got that bracket onto the new servo, as you can see it fits perfectly, um, just gotta get that servo back installed into your car and you're pretty much ready to rock. And after you have your servo reinstalled, all you have to do is attach whatever link, reattach whatever link was connected to your servo horn. So obviously not getting the full throw of the steering while on a bed, which is specifically why I put it on the bed so there's a little bit of resistance as opposed to on the carpet. Speed is incredibly fast as you can see, but we're not getting that full throw for sure. And let's look at the servo saver. It is opening a little bit when turning to one side as you can see that servo sa saver separating right there but to the other direction does not seem to be separating and it's still not getting anywhere near the full throw of the car all right so now we got the jx servo installed it still doesn't have the full throw but it's a whole lot better and when we get close we're going to see that servo saver working a lot harder so it's the fact that it's not getting the full throw of the steering isn't so much the servo, it's more the servo saver trying to save the servo. But definitely more of a throw. Not as fast. But you can see the servo is getting the full throw. And if we look at the servo saver, it's definitely working a lot more. And even in this direction, we can see it separating, getting some actual separation in this direction, as well as this direction. But that servo saver is actually getting some work in, so definitely a lot more throw, but definitely not the full throw. Here it is on hardwood as a comparison. Definitely getting more of a full throw. Dead speed, and this is still the Emacs servo. Here's on hardwood floor. Definitely a lot slower, but like I said, I care more about power than speed. And the Emacs servo on grass. Having a lot of trouble. And here's the new JX servo on grass. Once again, not the full throw, but getting a better throw than the Emacs servo, for sure. So after looking closer at the testing of the servos, if you look while the Emacs servo is uh, in the car and the car is on the bed and on the grass, you can see that the servo itself isn't getting the full throw. It's only going about here and here instead of going to the full throw, which would be closer to here. So in other words, that means the Emacs servo is failing and it's not getting its full throw and it's just not strong enough to pull the steering on this vehicle. As opposed to the JX servo, you can see that it's getting the full throw all the way left and to the right, but it may look like the tires aren't getting the full throw, but there's also a bunch of plastic parts on the steering and there's also a servo saver as I've shown you that is flexing and binding specifically to save the servo from damage and uh, that just makes it look like the steering itself isn't going as far which it isn't but if you actually look at the servo horn on the JX servo you can tell it's working all the way left and right so in other words the JX servo is doing absolutely great and the Emacs servo actually failed pretty badly so as you can see right now while it's driving the car has absolutely no problems turning with the jx servo which means all the problems that i had during testing with the wheels not turning as much as i'd like with the jx servo was due to the servo saver and all the plastic parts because as you can see the servo was actually doing its job i was getting a full throw out of the arm but the wheels just weren't turning so that was just the servo saver doing its job Either way, as you can see, 
I'm running the car and the servo works absolutely great. The steering works as good as I could expect it to, and after running a full pack through the car, I'm impressed with how well the servo works, and I'm happy with the performance. Another good thing is I know a lot of people like using JX servos in their 10 scales as well, and I'm pretty sure they're known for making a cheap but reliable and durable option, so I'm pretty sure durability isn't going to be an issue, and this thing should last me a while. That being said, this JX servo is clearly going to be the best servo option for the 12428, seeing as it fits directly into the original servo bracket while having good power, decent speed, and while not feeling as sloppy as the weaker or stock servos. Well, that should just about wrap it up for this video. It ran a little longer than I expected as per usual, but uh, hopefully you guys found some good information in there and hopefully this video helped. But yeah, if you guys got any questions or comments, go ahead and just post them down below. I will get to them as soon as possible. And as always, thanks for watching.